Hey everybody, welcome back. We've had a just a little bit of a hiatus in our plans here, getting this show back up. Normal life, quite busy with all three of us that tend to do this. And uh, but the biggest excuse would go to Bull Shark over there. He did the the biggest yeah. life change lately. Want to do a quick intro on that while we all try and pack up and get going here. Yeah, I guess guys, everybody can see I have a different background than what I normally have. And the reason is I moved from the Mississippi Gulf Coast to Houston, Texas. So now I'm a Texan just like the rest of y'all. So yeah. y'all can rest easy now that I'm a Texan. Uh, mate here. Yeah, the, uh, really couldn't schedule a time to do our show because, I mean, Logan's got, uh, you know, got, got his kids with his wife training for I think it was a triathlon or a marathon or something. She's got to run. So yeah, they got some big runs lately. Yeah. So she's been doing that. So, you know, he's, he's the one with the kids and then I moved. So by the time I got done packing at night, I was just wasted because I, I moved our whole family, our whole house. So, and I didn't hire a mover. So it's been a little bit detective. So, I've been here for in Houston for two weeks. We're still unpacking, and I just now found my box with my pipes in it. So, but luckily, I won't have much of a problem uh, finding my pipes now because, uh, thankfully, Shooter actually sent me a gorgeous pipe rack for me to put my pipes on. I guess he's so. I talked about needing a pipe rack so much. He built me one and sent it to me, and uh, I really appreciate it. It is a gorgeous pipe rack. I'm going to uh, put it in my office so I can keep all my pipes together and not lose any more of them. So I've thank you, Shader. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've meant to give him a shout-out. I haven't done it yet. So you can look up right, right up here. I got mine and my meager yep. other pipe selection. I only got a couple of pipes, so it's not very full yet, but very yeah. nice pipe. Right? Very nice. I'm going to ask for a gift. Hmm. All handmade too by Shooter himself. Yeah, yeah, I really have been needing one for a while now. Um, I mean, because I, I have a pretty good selection of pipes now, and I I have them broken up into three categories. I have my smallest category, which is my aromatics. I have like three pipes um, that I use for aromatics, and then I have basically English and Virginia split up. And Orientals I mix up with my English. Basically, if it's got a lot of key in it, it's in my English pipes. And then Virginia with just Virginia and Perique will go into um, a Virginia rack. So that's why I love how he made it a double. So that way I can really separate Virginia and then my English ones apart from each other. I guess it puts me ahead of the curve because with only, I think I got three pipes. I only got one up there, one in my hand here. But it uh, gives me plenty of time to fill it up and keep them organized. Yeah, I know Logan. I think needed two of them just to get all his pipes up. Jumped in two feet. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully my audio here works well because we're trying to set this up. I had a little audio issue and got it to work without the headphones, so I decided to leave it that way rather than push us off any further than we already were. So I guess after excuses. So mine was just busy family and I, nothing major, but made it tough to get all three of us together. So we'll move on to what we're smoking tonight. Continuing in our Cornell and Deal theme from before we left off a few months back. Tonight's the pirate cake. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what I'm just smoking now. <coughs> uh, hopefully, um, I'm not, I don't sound too bad because, like, where I'm at now, I have to smoke outside. I don't, I don't have a man cave anymore. And uh, so when I'm outside, I got a really nice back patio area. Really nice. But it's right next to a major road. So you might hear car noises in the background. I'm not real sure what anybody can hear. But uh, I haven't heard anything yet. Right. Good. So Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of glad to get back to it, man, especially with pirate cake is <clears throat> and had a little bit of that tobacco. Um, 
that uh, pirate cake, you know, it's it's a Oriental, which I, I tend to be leaning a lot towards now. I really love it. <clears throat> it's a um, it's got burley, Latakia, and Turkish tobacco in it, pressed into a cake, and it looks really cool. And I'm kind of um, noticing too if I get something that comes in a cake. And, and it, you can also get it in bulk when it's uh, a ribbon, you know, it's, it's rubbed out already. Right. That I don't know why, but the cake form of it just seems to taste better. I, I don't know why, but to me, I just enjoy it better. But this has a ton of Latakia in it, a lot of it, with uh, Turkish and Cavendish cup burley, according, <laughs> according to tobacco reviews. Oh. Uh, Yeah, I've noticed you that definitely that anything pressed. They seem to, uh, all I can guess is because continuing to be pressed kind of helps meld them or something like that, because they definitely have different flavor and they kept loose, ribbon cut or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, response. Yeah, and it's the same thing with flakes, too, that I've noticed. Like, if you can get a ready rub version, or a flake version. The flake version seems to have a little bit more flavor. <clears throat> so, I, I'm not sure why that is, but I mean, and it might be, I might be totally off. That's what I I prefer. <clears throat> but um, it's definitely. <clears throat> I don't know why I keep coughing, but anyway, it's definitely uh, preferable for me to have the flake version of it. And this is. This is pretty tasty to me. I mean, I could definitely... The Latakia is definitely the big dog on this one. I mean, I could taste a little bit of, like, you know, the Orientals, but it's not very strong. No, it's not real strong, but I do get it. It's in there. It's not hiding too much. It's not for me. Yeah, it's uh, hmm. Actually, back in March, I kind of only forgotten I did review this one, going through my cycle of sick fed reviews. So I guess I can kind of infer back to that and see how I think. Uh, what, four months, three months down the road. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's it's definitely, definitely heavily Latakia forward. Like it's a ton of Latakia, I'm, but I, I'm a Latakia lover, so that's that's okay for me. The background is, I get that the Orientals, it's just ever so slight though. Like <clears throat> I don't get that flowery Turkish Oriental kind of a flavor, but it's there. Like it's it's just faintly there. But I also get that that uh, burly too. Yeah, I noted that I know that I could get the you know hints of the burly, but they're they're quite muted in the background. The front for me is a lot of smoky, almost peaty notes. Yeah, it's got a nice sweetness to it. Back mine right here. Kind of a, a hustle packing job I did on this one, trying to get ready and moving. Yeah, I mean, I did the same thing. And that's one thing that was uh, pretty cool. I mean, Logan uh, sent us, let's see if I can get this out. He sent us uh, samples. Here's what the cake looks like, like that. And I rubbed it out in the bag, and it it rubs out really easy. I mean, it's so easy to get this uh, rubbed out, which is nice. Because some cakes, you know, when you when you start to rub them out, they'll actually like cube out, like they'll they'll crumple up into like another little bitty clods of stuff, and then you got to each do each one. This one, you pull. I could just pull a piece off the cake. 
and rub it, and it just falls apart, ready to go in the pipe. I like that. Uh, it's moist, but it's not too gummy. It just kind of falls back in little pieces for you pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, well, go ahead. And this isn't totally made of just this tobacco. This is something that I've actually noticed. The more I keep smoking and pay attention to what I'm doing, because I know I'm supposed to do it, but on our first light, get a good burn going to get a good tamp on it right at that first burn. But I know sometimes I don't. I'll light it, get it going, go right to it without getting a tamp on it. And yeah. It makes a huge difference on whether how well it burns. Oh, yeah. One of my newbie things I got to learn. It's got a little bit of mustiness to it, but it's not bad. And I was wondering if it was just my pack that was the reason I had to take in the torch to a little bit here, but I noted on my last time smoking it that it took quite a few relights, even though it was a good tobacco, it did take a lot of lights. Yeah, this one's, uh, I mean, I was kind of worried because I have a, I have a, it's hot as hell in Houston today. I mean, it was 98 degrees. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's okay for me. I'm from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I'm used to hot and humid. I'm fat, so I hate hot and humid, though, anyway. But uh, I got a fan on high out here, so it was a little little difficult to light it because, the, you know, the fan's blowing on the flame. Right. So. But so I got it lit pretty well, and it's it hasn't uh, let up. I mean, it's it's burning real nice, better than I thought I would. Yeah, so you run the same problem. Of course, you get in Mississippi, too, but same problem I get where if you actually take something outside – for too long, the humidity starts to pack into it so much that it actually gets overhumidified by the way you're trying to smoke it. Well, yeah, I'm, but I'm used to that. I mean, I know that's why, you know, people say, well, what do you keep your your cigars at? And I say, well, probably 65, 64 percent. They're like, what? That's so low. Mm, depends where you're at, you know. I mean, if I lived in Colorado, Arizona, yeah, that'd be terrible. But I live in a place where 90 to 100 percent humidity every day is common, you know. So I know right. when I get that cigar and I take it out, I come outside, it's going to jump three or four percentage, you know, humidity percentages. So I'll be smoking around 68, 69, 70, something like that, you know. So that's why I keep it low because I know. As a matter of fact, I can actually have cigars, leave them in, the, lay it out in the house, and they'll be perfect. Really, not even put them in a humidor. Uh, they'll be a little dry, but not bad. Not bad at all. Just because it's so humid. It's so humid here. All right. Same thing here. I got, you know, further south, we don't get quite as hot most of the time because of the, the golf. I'm right on. It doesn't have the bakeries. They got a lot of concrete. It's hot. Yeah. But I got humidity. I mean, 90 to 100 is the norm in the summer. Get down to 80. 70% other times, but it's not very low. I mean, I got a Nest thermostat in the house, you know, it tells me the temperature and the humidity in the house. Yeah. And it doesn't drop below upper 60s. Yeah. You somewhere in the, <clears throat> in the house, be 72 degrees and 70% humidity. I'll just open up the heat, but I don't need it. Right. right. And yeah. I have a Nest too, but not, not at this house, but at my house back in Mississippi, I had a Nest and it was, it would stay around. 66 68 so i mean hell i could leave my humidor wide open you know 71 72 degrees in the house i mean hell you're talking you know perfect humidor conditions my whole house is a giant humidor exactly i, mean, I got here i'll check my packs every now and then something dry but the humidity is still perfect where i need them well i always joke with people i don't need humid packs i need desiccant packs to put in my stuff because i gotta get the yeah. humidity most of the time just the opposite. <clears throat> yeah, that's why those, uh, <clears throat> like I have a, a special humidor just for my, like, Cuban cigars, right? And that takes those Bovita packs. They're, they're, it's a Savoy Executive Series, which are outstanding humidors. I love them. And they got this um, a lip that it's like a, kind of like almost tongue and groove where the lid shuts, you know, it kind of sits down inside of it. It's a great seal to it, but 
I had those Bavita packs I put in there, and they la they're supposed to last you how much? What a month? I think they're supposed to last you or something like that. Like a, one of those one big pack or something. I guess a month. But I get three months out of it easy. And then when I when I they get where they're a little bit kind of hard, all I do is I walk outside and I set them on my tool bench. And that's I mean, and within the next day, they're back flexible again. I don't have to do nothing. I love that. Yeah, humidor maintenance along the coast here is very minimal compared to anyone further north. The, uh, the sweetness on this, I get every now and then, but a little retro hair really opens up a, some sweet notes for me on this. At least about mid fall here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, it's a little one-dimensional, a little bit. I mean, because mainly what I get is smoky Latakia, but, but our understanding is like 75% Latakia is in this blend or something like that. And then it's like you got a little hint of, I, I get that little bit of flowery, sweet oriental in the, in the back. But it's faint, you know? That's a. And I get a, a little nice, bit of it. <clears throat> What's that? That's a nice balance for me. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's good. It's. It kind kind of goes back to where you know a discussion I had with actually uh, Jonathan Drew, and the very first cigars party I was over there we was testing these blends that he had made up on some cigars, and one of them was like you know he's you know people said oh it's kind of you know it's real one dimensional it doesn't change it's kind of boring I'm like he's like Bill what do you think I'm like well to me I don't care that it's one dimensional the flavors on the cigar are freaking amazing. So I don't, I kind of like that they don't change. If it stays that way all the way in, I'm happy. I don't really care. Complexity doesn't really. It's not the biggest issue. I mean, the biggest thing for me is flavor. And if it, that flavor is great from the beginning, it doesn't change. I'm fine with that. So that's kind of what this reminds me of a little bit. Like it's got good flavor, but it's not very complex. I mean, it's kind of a you know one trick pony kind of thing. I mean, uh, it's mostly. It Starting out with something you like and then trading with something you don't like. Well, that was kind of not what I wanted to happen here. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's you know, it's real smoky. A lot of Kia. If you if you if you're not a fan of lot of Kia, you're gonna hate this. I mean, it's got it's heavy lot of Kia with a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of floral. And it's got a little bit of nuttiness to it, but not very much. I mean, it kind of has that cigarette kind of feel to it. I mean, that's from the Burley. I see, and I didn't know if I liked Latakia or not. You know, I didn't hadn't had enough yet. But once I had this one, okay, I suppose I'm a Latakia lover because I. Oh yeah, this is uh, like. An ass load of water key in it. So yeah, if, if you say if you automatically you spoke that you was like, oh my god, I can't take. Yeah, you hate lot of Kia, but mm -mm. I got a question over here, and I'm gonna kind of refer to you on it because I'm not sure I completely understand the wording. It may be the question or this way it's worded, but uh, Swede Lindstrom wants to know how many times do you tamp for a medium bowl pipe. And with that, how many times do you fill the bowl? I don't know what he means by fill the bowl. I mean, I fill all of them to the top. I mean, I leave it just under the, the the rim. Like I don't fill it where it's overflowing because it's too easy to scorch the edge of your uh, the edge of the uh, the rim of the pipe. So I don't. I like I, you know. I I try to use the Frank method when I pack a pipe. So either that or I just do, I, I fill it up, push it down, and I do I do like the you know the three pack method, which is kind of developed right. out to a two pack, but then I push it down to where it's just a little bit below the rim, because I know when I do that initial um, charring light, it's going to kind of balloon up, and then I'll tamp right. that down, and then I light it. 
but for how many times I tamp, it, it's no, there's no real exact number for me. I mean, because I just, I just look at it when I start seeing that the ash is kind of piling up. You know, it's almost like like an actual cigar. You know how it kind of it's like you know it, the ash is like a, you know a perfect cylinder. You'll kind of see that in the pipe. So when I see that, and I see the little the burn holes around the edges of it. Then I'll tamp it down to a nice flat, even, even surface. And a lot of times fun. you'll you'll do that. Like I'm, I got a tamp now. It's just kind of one of those. It's a feel thing. And I used to honestly, I used to suck at tamping because I didn't know exactly when to tamp or when not to tamp. But my thing is, you can't over tamp. You can't do it. You'll actually think, oh my god, I'm going to put that out. But a lot of times when you tamp, you make that good flat, even charcoal surface. Uh, surface on the top to where you go back you'll get all that 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 smoke comes roaring back wow you put all the, the lit tobacco in touch with the unlit and keep a good steady burn going that's about when i do it too is when you start to see the feather up and lift up or balloon up as you said any of those turns where it starts to get a little loosely packed yeah push it back down keep the ass in the the lit tobacco together, otherwise it'll I've had it go out of me when I forget the tan. Yeah, but I've learned now I used to be scared to tamp like oh I'm gonna put it out. Now you'll see me tamp constantly. I mean I mean it also helps too when you break in it for a new pipe because you want to make that you know that carbon cake on the on the outside. And a lot of people say um oh you you only fill a bowl one third up and then smoke it a couple, like seven or eight times, then go two thirds, smoke it seven or eight times, then fall away, smoke it up. My thing is, what the hell's the point of that? Why not fill the whole bowl and smoke it down, knowing that the first couple, probably, you know, first two or three bowls, not be the best flavor because you're you're making that cake. But why not start it from the cake all the way up to the top, all the way down, and where it's even all the way? I never understood that, but. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, he, uh, Go ahead. He clarified his question there. So now he was looked like he was asking about when you fill the bowl. So and I do the same thing you do. I fill it full, but I put in, you know, a small amount to get roughly a third worth of tobacco in the bottom of the bowl. And I use my thumb and pack it down to just a field pack. Put another yeah. about third in, pack it down, and then get to the top and pack it down. If it's not, you know, just a little off the top, I'll put a little bit more in, but just a little down off the rim, you know, pack usually three times, you know, the light pack, a little harder pack, and then I put a good pack at the top. That way it stays the right density packed and works pretty well for me. Yeah. You just don't want it to have where you're like your pipe and you're smoking it and stuff. And then you have this big pile of ash and tobacco sitting above the rim. Because what you're doing there, you're scorching the rim of your pipe. You're messing it up. Just so, just make sure it's below the make bottom. Ashy mess too. Yeah. Because I've done that. Put too much in, or not realize how I did it. You light it, and the thing just flowers out the top and goes everywhere. I'm like, yeah. Oh, a little too much tobacco. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I mean, I've seen a couple of people that actually, you know, they'll light it. You know, they'll pack it and they'll light it. But then after, you know, after they do the charging light. When they do the full light, it's still it's still ballooned up, mushroomed up. You know, mm. they're smoking. They're actually smoking it with this pile of tobacco and that is sitting on the top above it. I'm like, I, that pipe's not gonna last very long at all, right there. But you know, some people just don't know. I mean, there's there's actually, I mean, there's a lot of science behind all, the, all this pipe smoke. You know, oh yeah, not a little thing. But the thing is, once you get, it's not. It's really by feel. Everybody does it different. Everybody packs differently. Everybody tamps differently. I mean, you smoke. Everybody smokes differently. How fast? How slow? And so it's all a feel thing. More than more than cigars by far. You know, and it's like for tamping. I just kept doing it until I figured out how I like to do it. And I would just tamp. So, but mainly what I do is when I, but if I can't, like right now, it's kind of dark. So I really honestly can't see much in my bowl because of the light here is pretty terrible right now. I kind of just lightly tamp. And the thing I too about tamping, don't press. 
don't press with your temp. Just let it fall. Use gravity. Lightly tamp it. Because if you press down, you're going to, one, plug your smoke. Two, you're going to put your, that's when you'll put out your embers. So if you just lightly let it, just basically let it drop with, with gravity, the packet, you'll be perfect. That's you'll, a good to make right there. Yeah. Because that's one thing I did early on was I was I was like, and I put it out. I'm like, damn, this sucks, you know. You get frustrated. You're like, screw this. It's too much trouble. It's too hard. I'm like, go grab a cigar. Making your own cake in the pipe. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's all feel. I just somebody said, here's how you pack it. You just kind of got to figure it out. All right. Well, it yeah. took a couple of tries, and it just automatically you kind of feel how how tight to pack it, and then it just kind of works. And after that, you're you're moving along pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I always check too when I after I pack the pipe the first time before I light it, I'll do a draw just to see how it is. And usually, I like it. You know, I, I can kind of, how we can, can equate it to cigars. Like I always say in my reviews for old Stoker Review is like I, the perfect draw for me is what I call a milkshake draw. So like you're drinking a milkshake through a straw, you know, you know. So how how that that resistance you get from drinking a milkshake through a straw, that's kind of what I want from a cigar. With a pipe, I want I want a little bit more loose than that. Not a whole lot looser, but just a little bit more loose. So I always test it first because the thing is, once you light it, you're you're in now. You're, you're no going back. But if you test it, you draw it, and it's too loose, you can kind of pack a little bit more, put a little more tobacco in there. Or if it's too tight, you can always dump it and then reload it. That's the good thing about pipes. You can always fix your draw. It's super easy. But right. once you light it, it's it, you're all now. Yeah, there's a lot more control with the pipe. You control the pack. You control how much you pack. How big a pipe you put it in. Same tobacco. You can do it any different way you want. Whatever time frame you're looking at, and some sometimes certain tobaccos want to be packed a little tighter than others. Yeah, another thing too is <clears throat> tobaccos. It's just like cigars. Some cigars smoke better at a higher humidity level. Some smoke better at a lower humidity level. Like. For, to me, like Illusioni cigars, to me, they like a high, kind of a higher humidity level. But like my, like around 71, 70, 70, 71, so even 72%. Percent. Now, when I smoke a Cuban, I'm on around 68, less. They just smoke better to me that way. But, you know, Broadleaves can handle a lot because they're thicker. They can kind of handle a little bit more humidity change. And the them, I kind of like it around 69, lower, but lower too. Because it's so thick. <clears throat> But pipe tobacco is the same way. You don't want it to be too wet, but you don't want it to be dry either. And the thing about that I've learned about pipe tobacco is, as cigar smokers, when you dry out to pipe tobacco, cause you don't want it to be sopping wet because you'll get gurgle. But when most pipe tobaccos are in a good, uh, have a good moisture content, good for smoking, to cigar smokers, we're like, holy shit, that's way over dried. It's going gonna, it's gonna to burn too fast and hot. It's going to be terrible. But for pipe tobacco, it's not. It it seems counterintuitive, but it's really not. Like I like like for instance, Orlick Golden Slice. It's a that's a darling to most people. Unless you smoke it wet, then it will bite your tongue and taste. It just burn hot, not right. But you let that thing dry out, it smokes so sweet and just it's got such a great nice sweet hay type of flavor. It's delicious, but you, it's out of dry out to the point where you think, oh my God, I overdry this. This is going to be just fragile. It's just almost turning into a powder, but that's where it smokes best at. And a lot of fact tobaccos do that. That's why you'll see a lot of people, <clears throat> but we can't do that. We can't do this, but a lot of people will take out a pipe and open the tin up and leave the tin sitting out open for like a day and sometimes two to get, we can't, if we do that, it's going to be a soup. We can't do that. So, <clears throat> We, some of the, some tobaccos, we can't get to the right humidity level just because of that. Yeah, well, I've had a couple of tobaccos that come out, and I get to them that seem really dry. And you would think, you know, the opposite of what you would think. You would think, well, this is dry. It's going to burn hot. It's going to burn fast. 
that's going to be it. And it's not what happens with pipe tobacco. It'll still burn. Sometimes it'll even burn and not want to stay lit when it's dry. Which right. Seems backwards compared to everything else. You want to think about burning and moisture, but pipe tobacco it acts completely different. Yeah. It's one of those feel games. Like, you got to, you know, once you get a t tobacco and you like it, you can kind of play around with it. Like, okay, I don't let it dry out. I do let it dry out. And keep and see which one you like better. Then we all know, okay, I need to can it right now because it's perfect right now. You know, that's the way I like it. I mean, and you can rehydrate pipe tobacco so easy. So, like, <clears throat> you could take a, uh, um, like a paper towel or rag or something, and it's actually two ways I do it. Paper towel, rag, <coughs> get it with distilled water, you know, and then like put it in a mason jar or like um, even a Tupperware thing and just lay it across the top, like wring it out where it's, it's just damp. Lay it across the top, put the close the lid on top of it, and it will, the, the pipe tobacco will absorb some of that, that humidity and it will moisten back up. I mean, it doesn't take, if it's, even if it's super dry, like, it's like it's going to just, like, you know, Sahara Desert mummy dry. You can still restore it. You can just, you just keep doing it a couple times and boom, it'll be right back the way it was. That's a good process if I need to be committed by any of mine. Yeah, that happened to my Hades Delight. It's kind of weird because, the you know, I, I don't. I don't can very much because I don't need to. I can just, I don't have to put it in mason jar because I just open the can, to open the tin, pull the, pop the top, and I'll smoke whatever I need out of it. And I'll put the lid back on it. And because where we live at is so humid, that's fine. It doesn't dry out. You know, if anything, it might get a little bit too damp, which is that's why I have them inside because they won't get too damp. But for some reason, I had a, I have a huge tin of Hades Delight that I've had for years and years and years and years. And the top of the t the top part of the tin of the tobacco at the top seemed really, really dry. And it got some points that that's way too dry. So I kind of pulled it out. And at first, what I did was I just kind of mixed it with some of the tobacco from the bottom, which was still moist, thinking that, okay, that will help, you know, spread out the moisture content and make it all even. It did, but in the opposite direction. It made the moist tobacco dry instead of <laughs> instead of having having the dry tobacco get moist. So it's like shit. So I just took a rubber made tin, a rubber made bin or whatever, and put a wet a paper towel at across of it, and I dumped the entire thing of Hades Light in there so it'd be even. And up it was a kind of a thick one of those big rubber made things. Actually, my wife used to cook brownies to put in there. So I'd take it and I put that paper towel all the way across it. And then snap the airtight lid on it, and I and I let it sit there for about two days. Open it back up, perfect. Good learning lesson from you that you can pass on. Now I know. I don't think I would have thought of that process right off the bat. was kind of like the law. I, I just kind of figured, you know, thermodynamic law. Was it the third law where, you know, it, it wouldn't reach equilibrium? You got hot and cold, and hot and cold will mix until it reaches the equilibrium. You know, one side won't get hot, one side won't get cold, and it'll just keep going until it reaches equilibrium. So I thought, okay, well, I think that's the third law. Yeah, that has to be. So I figured, well, if I put it all together, it will come to nice medium moisture content. Didn't do it. So then when I put the paper towel over it, it worked. So, which I'm sure in my engineering classes, I had a some kind of, you know, fluid dynamic law, that something like that, but I don't remember what it was. I don't remember all those thermodynamic laws either. That was uh, quite a few years ago, and I don't have to use them nearly as much as you would think when they teach it to you. Mm. It is. This is a tasty blend, though. You know, a tobacco reviews is kind of like it's either you love it or you hate it, and <clears throat> I, you know, it's. I think it's tasty, but I'm an English guy. English. I'm 
Oriental guy because of that, like my top two, uh, probably my, one of my top two tobaccos that I love right now that I'm just absolutely infatuated in love with is Balkan Sobrani. We all knew that. And then Potlatch from the Seattle Pipe Club. That is freaking amazingly good. And it's they're both Orientals. I like that flowery Oriental. And this has that in there, but it's it's just a, the faintest hint. Like you know it's there, but you you can't it's hard to explain it. Like you know it's there and you can feel it and taste it, but like when you try to taste it, like try to pick it out, you can't. It's so faint to me. Yeah, that, and you said it, that potlatch, that Seattle Pipe Club potlatch is just that stuff is good. I saw oh. it go somebody Pops them up on an email. I didn't buy any, but I probably should have. Yeah. I haven't bought anything in a while because of this move. You know, I don't... I didn't know how I'd store it when I got here. Where would I put it all? And so, I, I moved it. quite a few times. And every time by myself. But never from Mississippi to Houston. That's a long trek to do your own move. Yeah, I was lucky. My brother-in-law, he's uh, he drives race cars, so he has a 32-foot race car hauler. Perfect. Well, what he, we have uh, the company I work for. We have an employee, um, like an employee discount website, and one of the things was uh, was a moving a moving coordinator. That's what they do is they help you do your move. Like they'll go and they'll get you three quotes for movers and stuff and. They'll uh, they'll give you free insurance up to hundred thousand dollars for your valuables when you move and all. It's really good, yeah. but for my area, they can only get uh, two movers, and I could not get one of them to call me back at all. So I only had one mover. So they came and did my site survey. It was ten thousand dollars to move my house. So when my brother-in-law heard that, he's like, "Oh, that's bullshit! I can move your entire house by trailer." I'm like what? And that's what we did. I mean, we got the entire, uh, well, I would say the entire house. I gave a lot of stuff away. I sold some stuff. Like one of the things I sold that it, it just rips my heart out. So I sold my big green egg. I love the thing with a passion, but it's just, I bought it from another guy. His uh, wife is a colonel in the Air Force, and she was stationed in Biloxi, Mississippi, but she got transferred to Colorado Springs. And he sold that big green egg to my wife, and she gave it to me on Father's Day years ago, for uh, because he was moving. He was he was too scared to move it because it's all ceramic. The yeah. odds of it falling and cracking are high, so it's like you know, just sell it. I'll buy it when I get there. But I moved from a three thousand square foot house to a twenty two hundred square foot house, so we had to downsize drastically. So, but I, it's a good thing. I, I I needed the downsize anyway. I got too much crap. But and then that's kind of a one reason why I didn't like order any more. What, what this was leading to was that's why I didn't order any more pipe tobacco because I didn't want to have to pack it and move it. You know, I didn't know what this address was here yet. But there was a really good sale at Pipe and Cigars for uh, Seattle Pipe Club stuff. It was like. Uh, six tens for 50, 50 something bucks or something like that. Man, I wanted to hit that so hard, but I just I didn't do it just because I figured, you know, I don't want to deal with that moving all that. I you know, and I just said the hell with it, didn't mess with it. But I, w I wish I could have done that because I, I want more potlatch and I want to try Deception Pass, which I heard is amazing too. But I, I missed it. I'm sure it'll come back around. It's just too popular not to. Uh, I think the one I saw, I can't remember who it was, but I probably got the email somewhere. It was, uh, I think it was buy, buy two, get one free, and the hot latch was in it. Oh, my God, I'd have done that. Yeah, I should do a lot more, but I keep my all my tobacco buying quite low in my budget. Yeah. I could keep buying more, but I'd just be... I think it's a bad thing, but stockpiling a whole lot of tobacco back here. Not that I don't already have a little bit of stockpiled tobacco back here, but yeah. And see, I'm one of those people that I like to buy tins, like like a, one that I, like I've got a whole lot of GLP stuff that I've aged since 2000, 
four, five, and six. I said I like to do that with stuff that I've I love, right? Like in the new one that he just came out with called Gaslight, which oh my god, do I love that? That stuff is fan freaking tastic. Which we'll probably I think we're reviewing that coming up, so we'll talk too much about it. But that's one where I want to buy like you know five or six tens of it and just put it up to age, you know. But that's a lot of room it takes up. So I mean, just like you gotta, I gotta pick and choose what I really want to do there right. now instead of just trying to do with everything. Like one of my favorites, Balka Sobrani. I have, I think, 10 cans of that now. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you're in love with that tobacco. Oh, that shit's awesome. But, I mean, how I did that was, you know, it was like, I think it was 210 minimum or whatever, but I bought I bought some I bought some under my dad's name. I told my mom to go online and order two tens, and I had my wife go order two tens. And I had bought two tens for the last time it came out. So then I so now I have like ten tens of it now. But and honestly, if it comes back up again, I'm gonna buy more. Yeah, see the uh, Sigfoot store actually has one ten of that gaslight and stuff. It's it's fabulous, man. It really is good. I mean I know we don't do top tens on here. Maybe at the end of the year we might do like a top three or five of just of just not really of our favorites, but just things that wowed us over the year. Right. What we smoked over the year that deserves some attention. And I guarantee Gaslight would be on one of my top three. Well, Latter Kia based and a plug, so Yep. Sounds about right. Yeah, it looks pretty good reading the description on it. I may have to pick that up. Pick that yes. out of stock. Yeah, it's super delicious. If you don't, I will. I'll keep that in mind. I gotta look at it. I may need to make a little order and stock up on some more. Some more of my cigars. I'm getting low on my uh, Connecticut Fuertes and my Aquatanes. Yeah, I need to do that with a couple of things on there as well. Like the La Mission, I need to get a box of 59s. And yeah, those things sell like hotcakes. They're tasty and they're a great price. I mean, look at how much more can you ask for. Because we're a big fan of Roma Craft. And I can't beat Skip Crisis and those cigars are tasty. Yeah. Must be getting to the, close to the bottom of this here. Honestly, I can't see this to tell you if I am or not. Yeah, I can see it's getting a little dark on your end of the. Yeah. I got, and I got the lights that I use. Um, in my cigar reviews, when I when I did that, I mean, I, I could I could put them out here. I just I didn't do it. I was actually out trying to buy a grill <laughs> when you text me. Yeah, this was a uh, even though this was planned, it still came together a little sketchy till we got it all up and running. Yeah, <clears throat> but now we'll back in the groove. We'll be back every Tuesday night at eight o'clock central. Yeah, now that I've got the setup lined up for YouTube and the hangouts, got my, I think I got my sound issues fixed. I've got my tobaccos lined up. I think we'll be pretty good to start knocking these out. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Stay on it. And our glorious leader, El Bastardo, will uh, be making appearances every now and then. Seldom, apparently. Well, we'll see. He may make some more, but once you're not tied to something it's real easy to not come back to it yeah not that he isn't busy himself obviously a couple of things to do with the mfcdo yeah well you know the army what they say the effective range of excuse is zero meters say that one more time the effective range of an excuse is zero meters. Gotcha. That's true. 
Now, I'd say on this, I'm getting close to the bottom of the bowl. I don't know about you, but I'm picking up a lot more of the Turkish Oreo. I'm getting more of that floral note. That's probably what it is I'm getting. I didn't put it as floral, but now you say it. I think some of the cigars where I get a little more floral note or any of the other tobaccos even. And it's that mouthfeel, so much as a flavor, but more because I can tell how it smokes, how it feels. Yeah, but on the negative side of that, too, I'm also getting a little bit more of that cigarette quality. It's not bad, but I just now got a lot of it. I, didn't, I was like, oh, oh. I don't know the smoking end of a cigarette feel. I never actually smoked a cigarette. Well, I haven't either, but you know what they smell like, right? You've been around people and they smoke them. I was going to ask if it was just a smell thing. If you actually yeah, well, smoke no, them. it's it's like you know, you know when you, I mean, a smell is basically what you're tasting, basically, you know. So it's kind of like that. Like I could, I get that. Like I feel like I'm around my my cousin is a real heavy cigarette smoker, so I'm around him. I know I'm gonna get a you know a face full of it, and it it's what it kind of reminds me of, but. And it's that burly. Yeah, the flavor has changed at the end of the pipe. I yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it would change. Because the whole way, it's been like, you know, just straight Latakia with a hint in the background of Turkish. But. Yeah, I think it is at least. I'm not getting so much burly as I'm getting a lot more of that oriental. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's overpowering a lot of tea for me at the moment. No need to put it down, but I am getting close to the end of this bowl, which will kill that. It's almost um, trying to find the, the correct adjective to describe this. It's almost. I, I don't want to say iodiny, but you ever, you know those, what is it, the um, Isley Scotches that have like that iodiny flavor in the scotch? Is it, is it that word is? Or, I know it's not the Highlands. It's like a... The Islay? Yeah, isn't that the ones that have like the, is that the ones that has like the i I'm not a big scotch guy. I mean, I like Highlands you and that's kind of not, not positive, but I think that's what you mean. Yeah, it's got like an iodine kind of medicinal, almost after flavor t uh, when you with, on those those type of scotches. I could be, I could, I'm not, I know I'm right about the style of scotch. The region I might be off. I don't, I'm, I'm not like I said, I'm not a huge scotch guy. I kind of stick to just a handful of scotches, and uh, but it's, it's kind of like that, that scotch flavor that that you get the commas has that medicinal type of flavors to it almost like people are probably like iodine kind of flavor i'm getting a yeah. little bit of that and i might be worried getting like the cigarette type of flavor because it's something all putting it's all putting to me I, I hate cigarettes so it's odd i'm a big pipe of cigar smoker but I, I just don't like dealing with cigarettes i don't like you know i grew my dad was a two spec pack smoker every day you know so when I, I haven't smoked a cigarette in a long time, sometimes I, somebody sparks one up, the first smell, I'm like, ooh, kind of reminds me of my dad. But then after a little, I'm like, okay, I, I'm done with this. I don't want no more of this crap. Because it doesn't yeah, smell I, good. I can't do cigarette smokes at all. I just got to get away. Yeah. Never have. I've always hated the smell. Which makes me feel a little bit hypocritical with all the other tobacco we got here. But they're not, they're not even close to being the same. So. No, they're totally different. I was going to say, if Surgeon watches this, he will be sure to correct us on which type of scotch you're leaning towards. Yeah. But, I, to me, the reason I'm not a big scotch guy is because, well, one, scotch is so expensive. So it's like, and I like, like, I like the Taliskers. I like the McAllen's, Lynn Fittich, that kind of stuff. Um, I think Oban was another one I drank too, but like, what is it? Uh, what's the oh? I know the one that freaking uh, 
Ron Swanson off Park, Park and Recreation, the one he he's he's just absolutely in love with. Oh, ah, shit. shit! What was that? What is that scotch? But it's that's the flavor because I tried it. I tried that scotch. I thought, holy shit, this stuff is terrible. Ah, I can't remember what it is. I have to look it up. Um, it's like a um, like a it's like a medicinal flavor. Lager Moulin has become one of my favorites. That's music. it. That's the one he drinks. That's oh, it. Man. That stuff is good. You like it? Oh god. Oh, I it's cannot good. drink it. That's the that is the scotch that I was thinking of when I get when I get the bottom of this bowl. It has that type of flavor, and I oh, not me. Yeah, at IPCPR last year, uh, Steve Sock had shared some Lager Moulin sixteen with us, and oh. And I'd buy bottles of that if I could afford it. It's just a little bit pricey for me. And I'll buy my Talisker, but you know, like even the Talisker is 70, 80 bucks a bottle, so it's not cheap. Well, that goes back to what I was originally saying was uh Yep. That's it. An Isley Scotch. So that's the ones I'm talking about. Yeah, but anyway. Good. I've tried it, hate it with a passion. Not my type, not my style. I like the Highlands, like the McAllens and the Glen Fittiches and stuff right. like that. But what I was saying was, like, you, to get a good scotch, you're paying 80, 90, over 100 bucks. Or I can get a really good bourbon for half that, that I know I'm going to love. You know? All very true. I'm with you on that. And where I, in Mississippi, where I lived at, there was no real high end bar that I could really go taste it at. There was one, it was a store called Mazzino's uh, uh, Wine and Liquor. It was a really good store. He actually opened up a uh, Mazzino's uh, restaurant at the end of the, the shop center he was at. And his, I think it was his brother was the chef of it. Well, anyway, he had uh, a scotch flight that we could try pretty much any scotch that he had. He had an amazing selection. And because uh, I talked about, I have a friend of mine, his name is Doug Kubler, that he writes uh, for a Scotch magazine out of Canada. He's also a member of Cigar Weekly called Jazz Nut. And he sent me an autographed copy of his book that he wrote about scotches. And he tried to, he's, you know, he's tried to teach me, you know, about scotches, you know, over the years. But, you know, the ones that are super, super peaty and iodiny, I just, I'm, I can't get into them. So, but he's the one to turn me on to like McCall and stuff. And, I mean, one of the I say say that one of the best drinks I ever had in my life was McCall twenty five. I mean, that was like warm, delicious honey going down my throat when I drank that. Twenty five. That uh, that gives you the reason right there. I mean, Eighteen is damn good. Twenty five. It's usually pretty crazy. Not a bottle I'll be buying anytime soon. Mm -mm. I've had it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm getting to the bottom of my bowl right now. So mine's done, which is about right to the right at that hour mark here. All right, so let's give me your final impressions of it and your score. I'm gonna keep with my review. It's for me, on our scale, I'm going to put it at a four. You know, keep it in the rotation. It's not it, It's not quite a five for me. I wouldn't disagree with anybody making it a five. But I'll give it a four just because there's a few things I'd probably take over it. But it, it's worthy of a five. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it right now. I'm kind of side between two scores. I can still taste it, and it's not anything bad. So that, that helps rank it up for me. I'm not trying to get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking, too. I mean, I know you, you're down at the dottle level, and I'm probably at the dottle level myself. But it's still tasty. Like, I mean, I keep going back to it. I went um, back to it. it. wasn't enough to keep lit in the bowl. I had to just get rid of it. 
I probably would give it. I'd, I'd get, yeah, I was, I'm trying to tie between a three and a four. I would say a four because I was thinking a three because I would think there's, this is good, but I could think of a lot more things I would have that does this same thing, but better. But I keep puffing on it. I keep going to it. Yeah, so a three is when it's on sale, you know, a four is keeping the rotation. So kind of in between how much you would keep on hand there. Nah, I, I'm, you know what? I'm going to give it a four. It deserves a four. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's got, yeah, it's just got really good flavor. I mean, it's nothing spectacular. It's not complicated. It's not complex. It's just a lot of like here with a little bit of flowery Oreo. That's pretty much all I'm getting, you know, and yeah. that I'm and I'm fine with that. To be honest, I'm okay with that. Oh, it works fine for me, and the bird I find cleaned up towards the end there, so it wasn't so bad. I mean, yeah, mine just it's burnt out. I'm done. I can't smoke any more of it. Um, like I said, when I got to the bottom on that last relight, I got that kind of like I said that. Um, that kind of iodine scotch flavor. But what I just read it again, I, I didn't get it, which is odd to me. I, I should have got it, but I didn't. So it kind of, I don't know what that was. Might have been, um, I just say that's an, it was an anomaly because you, you didn't taste that at all, did you? Which part? They like that scotch iodine lava golden type flavor. I wouldn't equate it to that. I kind of got what you were talking about, but. I don't know that I could have called it that directly. Yeah, so it's not enough to really ding it, you know? I mean, I got it for, a, I probably got it for three puffs, maybe. And then, like, when I relayed it just now, I didn't get it at all. So, I'm just say that was an anomaly and push that out. So, yeah, I would give it a four. It's not complex. So, it, to me, it could never be a five. I mean, it's it, a five is Balka Sobrani level. and that, It's not nowhere close to that. It's not even halfway to that. So, I would give it a four, but, I, I mean, it's good. It's, it's got good flavor. It, it smoked well, you know. I mean, so, yeah, I'd give it a four. It was tasty. I would definitely, I'd smoke it again in a heartbeat, no problem. All right. Well, that sounds like a good wrap to me. We actually, we started late, but we got our hour in. We smoked the bowl, gave our scores. And I think this gets us back on track to getting here every Tuesday. Yeah. Barring any floods or hurricanes around this neck of the woods. Yeah, and if there is, so we'll, I'll be out here with uh, my hurricane drink and my generator going. I'll be good to go. It gets too bad. We'll just go to Logan's do the show from his garage. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, he's only two hours away from me now. Yeah, he's close. Easy. Yeah. Easy drive. All right, Ben. I will catch you next week. Sounds good. I'll see y'all later. All right, guys, we're back to next week with Cornell and Deal. We are doing, I should have looked for it. It's old Joe Kranz, isn't it? Old Joe Kranz, that's it. That's it. A very popular one. So we'll check it out and let you know what we think. All right, see you later, guys. See you.